I like looking at this subject of mental skills and mental toughness and breaking it down into simple acronyms or breaking it down into pictures that we can get our arms around. Let's look at the board for a second. So another way of looking at this is by doing a very simple chart. We can look at performance potential in the vertical axis on a scale of 1 to 10. Obviously our goal is to maximize our performance potential, to actually score a 10 on offense and score a 10 on defense in regards to our potential in any one game. On the horizontal axis, we have our hype, our emotional arousal. Now, bear with me just a second. Just pretend that I play my best offense at a 4. On a scale of 1 to 10, in regards to emotional arousal, 1 being extremely low, very even keeled, 9 being so emotional and so psyched and so amped to play, let's just say I perform my best at a 4 and I'm changing in the locker room, and I'm beginning to get excited, I'm beginning to get amped, I'm beginning to get hyped to, to play the game. And, and I, I, let's just say I leave the locker room at a four. On the surface, that sounds great, doesn't it? I'm at a four level. What does that mean in regards to my potential? It looks like this. When I hit that magic four for my emotional arousal or my hype, I'm about to play beautiful basketball. But what typically happens? I step out, and I get my first glimpse at an opponent. And what does that do to my hype? It actually sends me up just a notch. Maybe I go from a four to a five. And then I get into the warm-ups, and I hear the band playing, or I hear the music blaring. And now I go from a five to maybe a six. And then I stand at the national anthem. And I'm listening to the national anthem, and now my nerves are really beginning to go. My juices are really flowing. And I go from a six to a seven. Here's what that actually looks like for a guy like me, who's a natural four, plays his best out of four, Here's what that actually looks like in terms of the game. Every step I take beyond my four, from a five to a six to a seven, we see this. When I hit my seven, what has happened to my performance potential? Every step I take beyond my hype number is going to lower my performance potential. But that's typically not how we're taught. How we're taught is, for the big games, you've got to get up for the big games. You've got to get jacked and psyched and amped for the big games. And nothing could be further from the truth. Where do you need to get to for the big games? You need to get to where you're most comfortable getting to. Some guys need low emotional arousal to play great. Other guys need high emotional arousal to, to be great. But often we treat the entire team as one unit. Let's get them as psyched and amped and jacked as we possibly can. And knowing, for some of my players, that's exactly what they needed. And for some of my other players, that's actually the last thing that's needed. One of the, the, the sad facts in the last 10 years of me doing this is that most athletes, particularly at the Division I level, actually play the game of basketball overhyped. Now, why is this so critical to understand on the defensive end? Understanding this hype number is so critical because we need a slightly elevated hype number on the defensive end versus the offensive end. Again, because on the defensive end, gross motor skill patterns come into a uh, much greater play. Raw power output, speed, agility, quickness, aggression. Versus the offensive end, fine motor skills, timing, decision making, shooting the basketball, handling the basketball, passing, etc., etc. sister turnover ratios. The key message is this. Get to your hype number and stay there no matter what. It could be a bad call or a no call from a referee. It could be taunting or talking smack from an opponent. It could be an opponent doing something great to you. Or you could actually be doing something absolutely phenomenal in a game. You're playing lights out. No matter what occurs in that basketball game, no matter what occurs, you nail your hype number and you stay there no matter what. You don't let the size of the game dictate what your hype number is. You are in control of the three and a half pounds of electrical energy between your ears. You decide where your hype number needs to be and you let nothing on planet Earth change it for every minute of that game. Now, for you to do this, you have to understand exactly where you need to be. Now, there's the interesting question, isn't it? 